Welcome! I am Thomas. Welcome to a new edition. Uh, this is a true crime story that happened in Celebration, Florida. Uh, as I was in Florida um, almost a couple months ago, and uh, I decided to do this story here uh, that made national headlines. So I was in uh, Disney World, but Celebration Florida is right near, right outside of uh, Disney. It's in Osceola County. It's a suburb of Orlando, and it was originally developed by the Walt Disney Company. In the 2020 census, it had 11,178 uh, people living there. Uh, it's a beautiful town. But it has a monster that lived in that area. And that name that you see in front of you is Anthony Tote. If you're looking at Anthony Tote, you would be surprised that this man was once successful. He was a chiropractor. He had his own practice in Connecticut, which was a state that's not cheap to live in. And at one point, he would be going back and forth between Connecticut where his practice still was in Florida, celebration full Florida where the family once moved. It seemed that they had everything on the outside. And then he committed the most heinous act in the family home in Celebration, Florida. He, Anthony Tote, was 44 at the time. His victims were age 42, age 13, age 11, age 4, And Breezy, which was the family dog. Who did he murder? He murdered his wife, who was 42 at the time, his son, who was 13, his other son, who was 11, and his daughter, who was just four years old. We're traveling right now on the outside, uh, you know, outside of Disney here, uh, going into Celebration. I will show you the, uh, what once was the family home. Anthony Tote, the monster. Why? Question that we never know. So some background on Anthony Tote. His father, Robert Tote, was arrested in July of 1980 and charged with hiring one of his former students to shoot and kill his wife. In order to marry his mistress. Tony was just four years old at the time. And there is a picture of the Tote family. And in one of the rooms which this heinous act happened. And I want to dive, uh, you know, go a little deeper into the story with you guys, but just to finish giving you the background on Tote here. 
So his father, Harry, uh, hired a hitman to murder his mother so that he could Harry, uh, marry his mistress. Now, Tony, he witnessed the attack on his mother. The would-be assassin, strictly ordered to harm no one else but Loretta, did not harm Tony. Now, Tony's mother surprisingly... Thankfully, survived the bullet to her head, and she did move on to uh, remarry. Fast forward a couple of years um, into adulthood here. Uh, Tony, he dated Megan, a physical therapist and a yoga instructor in college, and the two later married. The couple worked together at a shared physical therapy clinic that they owned. After their children were born, Megan then became a stay-at-home mother, while Anthony managed the clinic. Now this, fam this family was by all accounts well known by neighbors. And the Tote children uh, were encouraged to get involved in the local arts and music. Anthony, well, he often volunteered as the youth soccer coach. And he had also worked with disabled children. In 2017, according to Anthony, Megan had contracted Lyme disease after a tick after a tick bite during a trip to Disney. So now supposedly, you know, after this trip to Disney World and she contacted uh, Lyme disease, Anthony said that she suffered from bouts of depression and became more reserved and isolated. So keep that in the in the background there. Um, you know, if we're painting a picture, it all seems well up until this point. You know, it seems like the family is going on multiple trips. Trips to Disney, which is the happiest place on Earth. Um, you know, and they're, they're doing well. You know, picket fence and big house and everything. Living life in Connecticut. And then, uh, you know, we're fast forwarding. The family decides to move. Rent to move to Celebration, Florida after living in Connecticut for several years. Now, Anthony uh, Tote, he would continue to work in Connecticut at the clinic, and he would visit the family weekly. So he would be, you know, working up in Connecticut and on the weekend going down to Florida. That can't be, uh, you know, that can't be uh, car rides. That has to be plane rides. You figure he has to be making in, bringing in a lot of money and, and doing well. If not, where is this money coming from? You know, the Tote family considered to be active in their Connecticut community. Uh... When it came to celebration, it was reported that the totes were, you know, withdrawn and uninvolved with their neighbors. Anthony Tote, by 2019, had gained a significant amount of weight and received a diagnosis of diabetes okay you know put on a couple of pounds 
later on in April of 2019 it was discovered that Anthony was charging patients for care that they had never received. An investigation had ensued which revealed Anthony was using the excess money to pay for the family home in celebration as well as trips to Disney World. He had also taken additional loans from firms in New York City who sued him for failure to pay. Tote was over $100,000 in debt. Debt. Sorry, <laughs> I mispronounced that word. So you could see the walls starting to cave in here. It seemed to have been a facade, and the facade was falling apart. We are now actually in or approaching Celebration, Florida. This is a beautiful town. I gotta, man, if I could just live here. Now, Anthony Tote committed the heinous act of murder on his family in December of 2019. Now, Anthony himself had consumed a large amount of Benadryl in what he claimed was a suicide attempt. The children had also been drugged with Benadryl. So, you know, in in statement to police when he was arrested, kind of this is a transcript of what he said, said he went into his daughter's room while she was asleep. He took time to sit with Zoe, who was four, and then he rolled over on top of her until she suffocated. This is from the assistant state attorney, Danielle Pinnell, that what she said in her opening statement at the time of the trial. He then suffocated and stabbed Alec, the, dis the district attorney said. He, he then went downstairs where Tyler was sleeping and killed him in the same manner. Suffocated and stabbed. Tote claimed he and his wife had an uh, agreement that everybody needed to die in order to pass over to the other side because the apocalypse is coming. That's the original statement. As we are coming upon the house right here, this is the house. It's the second one. And I took a picture to, to show you better how the house looked like. But that is the house where all this happened. So Anthony finished off the statement, he said, claimed his wife stabbed herself twice, and then he suffocated her with a pillow. He also suffocated the family's dog. The medical examiner ruled the deaths homicides through violence of unspecified means. The medical examiner also found toxic amounts of Benadryl in all four of them. Also found stab wounds to the abdomens of Megan Tot, Alex, and Tyler. And no evidence of trauma on Zoe, the autopsy stated. He maintained his innocence, Anthony Tote, after he was sentenced. I was not there the night my children died. Now, Megan's aunt and godmother told the judge, to the judge that she previously warned her niece about Anthony Tot's controlling behavior. 
We loved Megan and the kids very, very much, she said. And all I have is pictures and memories that I can hold in my heart. We watched him grow up. To have this happen is a nightmare. Anthony Tote, whose story changed a million times, he was sentenced to life in prison. Now the judge called Tote destroyer of worlds and sentenced him again to life without the possibility of parole. He will rot and die in jail. Prior to reaching a verdict, the jury deadlocked were brought into the courtroom where the judge read what is called the Allen charge, which is further instruction to allow the jury to talk about the decisions and give jurors in the minority opinion about the case a chance to reconsider their positions. In closing arguments, the prosecution said that the reason they were in court boils down to control, saying that's what Tote wanted. The defense argued there are holes and gaps in the story around the slings, creating reasonable doubt that Tote is guilty. Prosecutors and the defense rested their respective cases with attorneys um, representing Tote calling him to the stand to testify. While on the stand, Tote had blamed his wife for the deaths of his children, saying he came home and found the children dead and blood on his wife's shirt. He said he was distraught, tried to cover for his wife, and told the jury he tried to kill himself several times. I remember at least eight times, said Tote, adding that he tried to overdose several times on Benadryl. I just wanted to be with my family. A story that changed numerous of times. Now the monster will rot in jail. Rest in peace to the Tote family.